Do you like modern houses with subterranean garages and wine cellars and an open plan layout with indoor and outdoor living? Don't you go anywhere. I'm going to show you how to make this massive modern house. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night. Depending on what time you're watching this next episode from me, Avamads, in my house tutorial series. I am making modern, not just modern, but big modern today. It's got a wine cellar. It's got an underground garage. It's got an inside outside swimming pool. It's got open plan living and it's got an elevated patio. What more do you want? Let's get making it. Because we're freestyling this build, we don't actually know exactly what blocks we're going to use, but I suspect the palette is going to look a little bit like this. I will do a world download. The link is in the description below so you can come in and see exactly what I used yourself. The dimensions of the floor plan are on the screen right now. Pause the video, make a note of these dimensions because they're going to be pretty critical for the walls coming together. Once you're ready, press play. Let's go. Now we're going to build a structure that effectively goes underneath the house, kind of, and it's in this dark grey square. So what we're going to do is we're going to take off one full layer all the way across the dark square and then we are going to go one in, so leave this gap, and then take off another layer all the way along like this, and then one in, take off another layer, and we're going to do that five times, so we're effectively creating five steps down. I'll be back when I've done that. So here you can see we've got five steps down and at the top we're going to put five lots of steps including against this original bit here. So all the way across I'm using some polished andesite steps. I want this to look as much like a road or a dip as I possibly can and I could use stone steps I suppose but I actually tested it out and it looks a little bit better believe it or not with polished andesite. This is something I thought I'd never ever hear myself say polished stone who would have thunk it and then here we're going to just use exactly the same stone polished andesite to layer the entire floor so I'm just going to do that now what I really like about this is the squared texture and the slightly ruffled look that it's got like something has driven over it over and over again because what this is is an underground garage so we've completed these walls with just normal stone and we've gone right up to the level of the ground and you'll notice that we've put some grooves in now these aren't going to stay grooves but right in the middle of the back wall so four on either side of it and two up I want you to go too deep and pop in a sea lantern and then on one side come in one block on the same row then pop in another one too deep gap of three another one too deep gap of three another one too deep and then once more do it exactly the same on the opposite sides and then you need to come this side of it so stand on the ground pop yourself a trapdoor there and flip it up and you have to do it in this orientation to get it flush with the wall and then just fill in the gaps above with the stone again come up to ground level and along this concrete wall here I want you to come into blocks and on the third one I want you to dig a trench all the way along that should be 10 blocks long and then right along this edge wall, but not on the edge wall, dig along 12 more. So that's one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That makes a trench that is 13 long. And then come out along 10. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And you should find if you dig along here, that joins up very nicely. Now I want you to dig a hole here that is five blocks deep. My mistake, make it six deep, not five deep. Whoopsie on that one. Right, now get yourself some stripped wood. I think stripped wood looks better. You could use normal wood or anything else for that matter if you'd like. But I'm gonna use stripped oak logs and I'm gonna pick the long direction of the room to have my stripped oak. So you can see it all goes in one direction and it has to all go in the same direction otherwise it would just look bad. So finish that off in the room and once that's done, I'll be back. One nice wooden floor later. Come to the wall that is separating you from this garage area and come in one from the edge and dig out a square like that. Dig out another square 
and dig out one final square. You have made yourself a nice little walkthrough. So as you go from the garage straight into this under room here as well. Now obviously now we've got this dirt showing so we need to take this and make sure that it is the same otherwise it just won't look right. We need to do something with this floor. I recommend you take the same block from this wood here and then this stretches in like that. So it marries the two rooms really, really nicely. So now you need to decide what color walls you're gonna be doing in here. I have gone for stone bricks because I've got an idea that I'm gonna be using for this room in a little while. You can see I've done exactly the same use of the trap doors, so leave a little gap at the above and then you can flip it up nicely. I did, however, bring this wall in one. This room is only nine wide and not 10 wide, so I apologize for that. It just didn't look quite right because that wasn't in the middle. So we can now put one in the middle there as well if we choose. Here, if you wish to put a little door, you can. You can see in the middle bit, I've dug up two. I've put in some sea lanterns and then some trap doors just to close it off. I am gonna put a double door there. I'm gonna use spruce doors because they look quite glassy and I think that's gonna be in keeping with what I want to do with this room here. Next thing, come up again and we're gonna make ourselves another little hole right here. So in exactly the same way you did over there, come in three and on the next one, dig that out. You should have four left to go. Come along nine and dig this entire section out again. Again, you want to go down six deep. Down in the bottom of your hole, get yourself the same block that you did the floor next door in and create a floor in here as well. Now, if you've used strip wood, make sure that the strip wood is going in the same direction as the other floor. Otherwise, it might look a bit weird in just a minute. Once you've done that, come one in and dig exactly the same hole as you did previously. It should be three deep, pop up two that way, put yourself a sea lantern in the top and create yourself the wall in exactly the same way as you did on the other entrance, like that. Decide what wall you're gonna have here in a minute, but get yourself your trap doors and pop them right there. That gives you the light. But in here, this is why you needed the stripped oak to go in the same direction. Keep it running all the way through. Maybe the doors would look great exactly like that. I've gone for this gray concrete because that's gonna be the primary color of the walls of the house. So we're gonna build a staircase that goes up to the ground level. So come underneath the light so I'll put a light in opposite the other light there and come out two like that. Upside down steps there and then staircase yourself up right to the surface and you should find this comes out right on the edge exactly like that. And now we've got our under level pretty much complete. Don't worry about the fact that this is grass because this is gonna become the floor. We have gone for our floor a stripped birch log except for this bit here where we've gone for quartz blocks. Not smooth quartz blocks, but quartz blocks because they give us that nice gridded pattern and you'll see why we want that in just a moment. Now, we need to start thinking about these walls. The first wall we're gonna deal with is the wall that will continue around this garage area and we need to come up another three blocks all the way with the same stone block. So all the way along, get this wall an additional three high. So it looks like that. Now it looks pretty high and that's okay because remember the car has got to get in the gap that is that high rather than a gap that is that high. So it's quite important that you get that bit right. And then we wanna be putting a roof on it. Now you've got the choice. You can either come across at that level or you can put a roof that is one block higher. I'm gonna do exactly that and I'm gonna roof this off one block higher. We've created that little box, but you don't just want an opening like that. So what I'm gonna do, I think, is I'm gonna build this up and around it, one block higher than the current roof level, like that. And then I'm gonna use a quartz pillar and I'm gonna cut out this one here 
and I'm going to bring that along probably two like that but I'm going to leave that open because that gives the impression of that actually being part open and I quite like the idea of that I'm then going to get myself a stone button and I'm going to bring the stone button I think how much one two three four five six seven eight nine so I'm going to bring the stone button in odd numbers like that all the way around the outside we are going to build ourselves a wall that is in this concrete and you know what we actually are going to come along on the outside of this too we'll replace this with the wood and then here we're going to come around the outside of this with more of this concrete that's brilliant and then we're going to go all the way along all of the walls with a one high row so we've got the frame of our house like that and in the corners we're going to come up another three one two and three wherever there is a corner we're going to come up three this wall will become a complete solid wall starting from there but in the meantime we're going to get some gray stained glass and it looks like that and it really is starting to come together some of these will just stay too high some of them will get a lot taller i suspect and we need to decide which ones are which now i've been looking at this for the last few minutes and i wonder whether or not we need to put some kind of sweeping feature in this side here so we're going to bring this up another two and then i'm going to come across all the way to this side here and then i'm going to take those out bit of a gamble but it might just work then i'm going to come along all the way around here then we're going to come up an equal number so one two three one two three and four and we're going to come across then i'm going to get the glass and i'm going to pop some more glass in here which should give us a four high doodah of glass always difficult to shove the glass on the sides and when i've done that i'm going to pop it around the corner as well and we're going to get it this entire row and i wonder whether or not that might look good so i'll be back when i've done that so we've created this swooping shape. I've changed it up a little bit. This is now only three panes high because I want the two high blocks above the two separate floors for reasons that will become clear very, very shortly. Also got two high blocks at the top and the sweep continues right the way across the garage to the back wall and we're gonna turn the corner and go down this way as well. Now what we need to do is we need to get the other walls in. Now, not all the walls are gonna have these massively open uh, glazed areas. So for example, here, I want to continue this wall across in exactly the same way, but that's only gonna have a relatively small uh, window on that side because you can have just too much glass. So that'll be a little bit like that. We'll continue this around this side as well. And then on here, on the white area, I'm literally going to just edge this off all the way around with some white stained glass. The white stained glass then sets off that white concrete really, really nicely, but creates an enclosed area that will actually be relatively external to the house. You'll see what I mean fairly soon. I think that is starting to come together. Right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build up some of these walls a little more, uh, put in a little more of the glass uh, in this area here for example and then we'll be able to start the actual internal structure that is going to build up where the different rooms are going to be so I'll be back when I've done just a little bit more of that so you don't just see me plopping glass in the external wall structures are starting to come together you can see we've put a big old glass front wall in that with some curly uh, round the cornery type glass but then some glass panelage here as well this has become an exit into what looks at the moment to be a relatively external area, although we'll have some internalization as well. We've blocked this bit off here, and what that gives us here is an indentation into this front entrance, which adds a little bit more character, I think, to the build. We're gonna be just building across some more struts. Notice we're sticking with the two high. There is a reason for that, as I say. We're gonna be just creating some interesting lighting effects using this two high ceiling or too high thickness of ceiling and uh, from there I think we can start to create a relatively open panel 
inside, but I do want a mezzanine that stretches across from the top of the garage area and down diagonally to this area, keeping it open on this side and open on this side. So I'm just gonna finish off these walls, uh, get the glass in, and then we can start thinking about that mezzanine. The house is becoming quite modular, but I actually quite like that. I think it starts to look with all these kind of different changing sweeping angles, quite attractive. It really begs for an open plan inside, but I do need to have a level of separation very definitely. I'm just gonna get more of this glass in. You can see behind me that I've broken that window. You can see behind me that I've blocked this bit out so as we've got uh, a pod we're not going up higher than this because this here is going to be an external area upon which people can come out sit and have a nice time to the point where I'm going to just see what it looks like with white trim rather than the windows of the the gray trim it may not work on this gray concrete but it does echo the trim below which is also going to remain open so I think let's just have a look at it from a distance I reserve the right to change this in a moment but actually with the exception of that bit in the corner which doesn't remotely work where the glass meets up we need to change that I think with the exception of that that actually works quite nicely I've got a big hole there for the entrance I've not decided exactly where that entrance for this area is going to go yet now what I need to do I need to get the floors in and once we've got the floors we'll be able to see where the different entrances can pop on the second level and also how we're going to get ourselves up to the second level clearly we're going to have this stone showing uh, so we're going to fill in this completely with the concrete all the way along and we're also going to fill in this bit on the outside as well because that looks just a little bit ugly we'll perhaps do something decorative with that in a moment over the top of that garage we just need to fill in this floor too high not just one high but we're filling it right up to the level of that glass so i'll be back when i've created the floor area so we've got a fabulous big open plan area in the top with a too thick floor uh, that comes across to this area leaves a gap here so as when you enter through you've got a little bit of openness then a massive open bit here and this is where the stairs to the second floor is definitely going to be with a big open window I like the way this is coming together I need to put a wall in there to create that separation because if you look on the outside that continues that wall up there and the architectural element would have the walls in line with each other because that's how the supports work we can then pop some glass into the holes so as we've got complete and that should pretty much finish up all of the glazing of this particular building we can start to do some internal separations we need an opening here there's going to be glazing involved at least in part of it and perhaps I just have a completely open area perhaps I'll just leave it open like that and it mirrors the one underneath as well then which is quite nice so we have echoed the floor of this external area on this balcony area here as well and we'll fill that out with some quite interesting stuff shortly we've created some white glass barriers i think that works to continue the barrier-esque style and now what i want to do is to get the lighting system in here now the way we're going to do the lighting is different to the way i've done lighting before and we're going to come in and this is why we've got a two deep um, ceiling we're going to come in and we're going to just dig out a row all the way along right to the end and one short you can see we're one short then leave a gap and come back the other way leave a gap come back the other way and just continue that until we've gone all the way across so there'll be one there one there and one there so you can see we've got these grooves here and they work really really quite well let's bring one more stopping just one before the end you can see here one before the end all the way down to there and then we've got one more that just comes on the inside of that there that's perfect so we've got all of these grooves now so what are we going to do with these grooves well you can fill these grooves up with your lighting system you could use glowstone you could use uh, perhaps uh, sea lanterns but what I'm going to use is an end rod now the reason I use end rod because it looks a little bit like a neon strip light so I'm literally gonna pop end rods all the way along here 
on the ends rather than pointing downwards. And you can see, if you come along here, they look rather like neon strip lights. Now, if you want to, you could perhaps put a block to end that neon strip light every now and again. That could be quite effective. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get all of these neon strips in and that way we'll be able to have this underside lit up nicely. I've also done exactly the same inside here. This works really, really well with the quartz, obviously with the white end rod against the white quartz. It's incredibly effective and that animation as well just makes for something that's a little bit more interesting. What you can also then do, should you wish to, you can take a trapdoor and perhaps you could put the trapdoor on top just to cover it over. Certainly on the outside, the wooden trapdoor contrasts really, really nicely with that uh, quartz. I like that a lot. Inside, perhaps, wooden trapdoor, not as nice, but you might want to consider a different trapdoor. I've got an iron trapdoor here, for example. So if I was to get the iron trapdoor, it's a little bit more in keeping with the color palette, and you can have the iron trapdoor covering over those end rods without any loss of light. So that is the bottom floor done. Now we need to do a ceiling for the top floor as well, which is going to cover the entirety of the build. I'll crack on with that. I'll put on some lighting exactly the same as I've done here, and I'll be back when that is completed and we can put some detail in it. We've now got a fabulous open studio plan and then you come up the stairs, you've got a continuation of that. Now you could use this if you were doing like a modern office block. This would work really, really well as an open plan office. You could put plenty of desks and things like that around it. But I think we're gonna turn this into a modern house. We need to add in some of the detail. So let's crack on with that now. So I know they say the heart of the house is the kitchen, but I am starting with the bedroom. So what I've done is I've just put some just stone slabs there just to create an outline for the bed. So we've not got the bed sticking up. Makes it look a little bit more modern. By putting it three wide, we've ended up with what looks like a nice, big, huge bed. In fact, we've got some iron posts surrounding some chests. That, again, we've got some stone slabs all ringing around this lit up area here. And again, I'm using end rods. This is effectively the wardrobe and you can see straight through the wardrobe onto the outside. It makes for a nice effect and you can come around the back of it as well. We've popped in five chests by using shift click. So as they separate into individual chests, they're embedded into the floor so as they don't get in the way. And then we've got some item frames here where we can put some of our everyday tools and things like that that we might want to use. And they're stored beautifully just there. We've got a big glass separating wall. I've put in a post here because this is a big old ceiling and it's going to need some support. And we can knock out a hole somewhere in here, let's say like that that looks pretty good and this can come through to the bathroom and the bathroom i wanted to have a nice big bath but also we need just a little bit of privacy so let's build up a bath shape like that so there is the tiddliest little bit of privacy there bring it up another level like that and then we can get some water and we can fill this bath up just come down here if we put the bath there and there there and there and we've got a beautiful three by two bath that has got lots of still water we can make a way to get into the bath like that that's very nice indeed and then we can create a shower and maybe some other features in this bathroom as well. So I'm sure you've already guessed, this bit is going to be a swimming pool and I've dug out a slightly less regular shape, a slightly, I guess, irregular is probably the best word, isn't it? Irregular shape, bit of a blobby shape because it's a little bit more posh and dig out just one deep. Now, if you dig out more than one deep, you're gonna find filling it is a challenge. So, and you don't want any horrible blocks where you've got you know no water sources it just doesn't look right so get yourself water source blocks every other block and what that will do is that will create you once i've done all the sides a nice flat 
beautiful area like that. Now at that point, you can then dig out again because it doesn't matter that the underside isn't a water source block. As long as the top is, then you get that lovely, smooth, ripple-free surface and you don't get that noise. Listen now, there's none of that running water noise, which you don't really want when you've got a swimming pool. That's probably a bad thing. So dig out one more deep and then around the sides, get yourself your uh, same block of quartz and replace it with the, the dirt block. So you've got a continual wall like that. And then in the bottom, also place the quartz. You don't need it more than two deep. You are, after all, only two blocks tall. So anything more than two blocks is probably unnecessary. You are entirely submerged in your swimming pool like this, as you can see. So get the floor done, and then we'll put a little bit of light in. So we've got a reasonable amount of detail in here now. We've got a nice big dining table with some chairs that we've done using spruce steps and spruce doors just to make them look like they're a little bit more high backed. We've got a good kitchen area. We've got a breakfast bar here. We've got a prep area. We've got a sink. We've got our hob which turns off and on. Uh, we've got obviously our cookers, a bit more prep. And in here we've got our oven which will give us a little bit of smoke coming up every now and again. And the way we've done that, dead, dead simple, we've got a little campfire going there. And because the campfire smoke goes through one block, you'll get smoke inside, but it won't come up and over. Some iron blocks around an anvil just gives the feel of a flue with some pictures lurking around. I've glassed up the side of this just so as it wasn't so open. Out in the swimming pool area, we've put a diving board if you want to dive dive into that depth of water you go for your life we've got some end rods with carpet on top just to give some additional light around here some lounges and some tables a little bit of towels down with tables and some seating area and then upstairs we've also got a little bit more detail as well we've got ourselves a living area upstairs we've extended our bathroom we've got a toilet there we go we've got our bath that you know about we've got a shower that is a working shower Turn that off again. And we've also got a little sink and our jacuzzi that we've used with soul sand. Very simple, really. And then up and along here and downstairs, I just want to show you what we've got inside here. We've got just a little library area, a few books, a plant on top of that. In here, we have got our wine cellar because obviously you can't have a modern house without drinking a lot of wine. That seems perfectly normal to me. And here, you must forgive me, because we've got the biggest blooming car you have ever seen in your life for a person that's the size of a Minecraft person. But there's a car, nevertheless, and outside. We're back out to the outside area. Bit more detail, and then we're done. And I think we have got it finished. My work here is done. We've got a nice modern stripy garden, which we've achieved with two different colors of concrete. Works really well. But at the end of it, we've got a little wildlife garden, often a feature in modern houses. A lovely drive, at which you can drive that really crazy orange car. And inside, you can see we've got a number of details, including our wardrobe now filled up with clothes, our display cabinets now ready with tools, and we've got lots, if you can see through that lovely big window, lots of decoration and images and photos, etc. Lighting using glass, just individual glass panes, because they form a nice pole with a lantern on top. It makes a really nice modern lighting effect, but also using scaffolding as side tables. I think it works really, really rather well. If you want to download this world, it is available in a link in the description below, and you will be able to go through it literally block by block. Usage of note blocks and also composters as the uh, planters for various large foliage. We've planted up a number of long flowers as well. And I think all in all, it came out pretty well. One modern house, not something that I often do actually, but they're quite fun to build because you can play with angles and colors and lighting and it works rather well. 
If you have enjoyed this video, please do remember to download the world and go and have a look at it and maybe see if you can improve on it. I would love to see some of the images of you having improved on this house. That would be awesome. Don't forget to hit that like button. It'd be great to know you're enjoying it and I will keep on making them. If you want me to do big houses, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you've not done it already, please do hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to see you in my sub club and I look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.